Regeneration medicines, oh, I think it's important to do that work. Of course it is, and, and you know, people are either trying to replace cells, or they'll try and replace a piece of tissue. Of course they're all important, but they're a long way away from being available to us. My name is Carol Black. I'm a doctor uh, of many years standing, a, a physician who moved into health policy. The poor have got poorer and the wealthy have got wealthier. The wealthy will have access to trying these things, but actually we've got to do something that helps everyone. And we will always learn from people who are pushing at the boundaries of science, and I wouldn't want that to stop. But I think you need to think, how do you get good public health into populations? How do you get good social care? How do you get governments to behave differently? And how do we get each other to behave differently about older people? We're all very ageist. I think there's been a huge um, shift into thinking how you manage chronic disease. So yes, I mean, there and making it better, getting better drugs, getting better treatments. If you think about it, we've also got much better at replacing joints. As you get older, you might need a new hip, a new knee. When they first came out, they, they were okay, but they weren't very good. But now, you know, engineering and technology has really made them so much better. So, in, in fact, there's been a big increase in the things you can do medically for older people. But we haven't got very good, I don't think, at keeping older people independent and making them feel comfortable and confident to go out. You know, they worry about becoming frail. The surest way to become frail is to sit down all day. We all age, but some of us do not age very well. And so really the essence is how do you bring about healthy aging? And you know, of course there will be new drugs and of course there will be uh, cell and tissue and organ replacements. But most of us, most ordinary people can age better by doing some very simple things. As you get older, you ought to be really keeping up your level of activity. What is so bad for us as we age is to become more socially isolated and to sit. So we're now really in, the, in, a, in, a, in a different environment. If you are lonely and at home and your world is narrowing all the time, that is a very sure sign that you're getting much more introverted you may well become depressed then somebody gives you antidepressants which probably makes you worse rather than trying to get a much more social integration I'm very keen on what I'll call intergenerational um, association so young people being with older people young people working with older people older people sharing their wisdom Whereas often we ignore older people, we don't listen to them. And ageism is really very rife. So yes, they will be scientific discoveries. You can't stop your telomeres at the moment getting shorter, I don't think, but you can do so much else. So how do you help ordinary older people? You know, how do we get them to be able to feel confident um, even using a cell phone, I mean, some, you know, relatives, younger relatives will buy their older relatives a phone and then they really don't quite know how to use it. And how do you enable an older person to use an app? And, and there, I think, there is a lot of what I would hope would be intergenerational um, communication. And
I mean, if you think about it, the things that used to kill people, um, first of all, were infections all around the world. We have got much better. And so, not in every country of the world, but we have reduced the level of infection, tuberculosis, you know, really nasty um, infections, really serious bacterial infections. So we will, of course, have enlarged the lifespan. We've got better at treating diabetes, you know, chronic conditions, um, hypertension. So we are allowing people to extend their lifespan, but you really have to ask the question, are how many of those years are healthy? I don't want to live to a certain age and then have to live 10 years not healthy, not able to go anywhere, perhaps, you know, having had a stroke. I mean, what is the quality of life? So our goal is to make as many people as possible able to live as healthy a life as possible. So that span when you're not well is as short as possible. And I think that's what WHO mean. And of course, because we've got more people living longer, we have to worry about have we got enough young people? And birth rates have gone down in many countries. So you need more older people in the workplace. The problems that keep older people out of the workplace is that employers aren't flexible. They don't encourage it. When they hire people, they don't hire positively for age. You know, they often say, oh, well, you're too experienced. What they mean is you're too old. Um, they don't provide health resources in the workplace. So a very good thing is to have um, an MOT. So you get a midlife sort of checkup. That's very helpful to middle-aged people. And, and then how do you enable older people to learn new skills? You'll find many employers, if you're 55 plus, are not going to send you on a training course. That's wrong. And so they're the sorts of things we need to change. Um, and they would help people live longer, healthier lives. Well, what I, we do through the Centre for Aging Better is we take evidence and then our job, um, what the British government wants us to do, is to then to start to put that into practice. So, for example, we are working very closely with employers. Quite a few of those employers are international employers, so they're not just companies that have got um, or offices and businesses in the UK. So what we hope is that the work we do will, in a way, find its way into other organisations. But all the research and the, um, the things that we develop are available um, around the world. So we, we don't see ourselves as just UK-based. We, for example, developed a library of photographs of older people. Because if you look in magazines, if you look anywhere, People always portray the older person as bent, with a stick. They don't present them as vibrant and doing good things or enjoying themselves. Now that, that library is available to anybody in the world. You just have to go onto the website and take it. So we're just about to start a, a campaign on ageism which we will first of all do, uh, of course, uh, at home in the United Kingdom. But again, as we learn about what works and what doesn't work in a public campaign, you know, we hope we can share that with the world. Um, we are the UK leaders for the WHO um, age-friendly communities. You know, they are trying to spread age-friendly communities around the world and so we have been leading for them in the United Kingdom growing the number of local areas which become age-friendly and are trying to bring things out in local communities that help older people. I'm really excited about trying to get intergenerational communities so that 
the young and the old benefit from each other. Older people love being around younger people and I believe younger people can learn from the experience, the knowledge of, of older people. I believe that works in the workplace. I mean our aim at the centre is to enable people to live as fulfilling a life as possible for as long as possible. Now your fulfilment may be different from mine but our aim is that each person should be able to live a fulfilling life, not have to live a lonely, miserable, in poor health existence till they die.